What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I am back with some more boxing. Just watch Carl Frampton really execute his game plan and destroy Chris Avalos. I want to do my post fight review, and I'm not going to say it was a good fight, it was a good performance, but it, it really wasn't a fight. It was pretty much a bust on behalf of Chris Avalos, who really all the pre fight hype and build up things like, in case you guys didn't get to see, um, Chris Avalos, apparently his mom spit gum on Carl Frampton, like as a form of disrespect. During the weigh-in, Chris Avalos pushed Carl Frampton, like at the at the face-off or whatnot. So, and he was just talking a gang of shit, saying he's going to come to Ireland and go to um, beat Carl Frampton in his own backyard. And that clearly wasn't the case. So it, it kind of reminds me of Adrian Broner versus Marcos Maidana, where before the fight, you talk all this shit, and the night of, you didn't really show up. And it wasn't a good performance by him. But it's kind of like Roger Mayweather. A lot of people make fun of Roger Mayweather and stuff, the way he talks or, or whatever, but the motherfucker knows his stuff and being a former fighter. And one thing he says that I always apply is who he beat. And he, if, if he ain't beat nobody, and that's how I felt with Chris Avalos. Now, I didn't get a chance to make a video about this, but I broke it down on my social media, and this played out pretty much how I expected um, I said Carl Frampton, I think I said a stoppage between rounds five and seven, and we got that stoppage, it was in round five, so um, another prediction dead on, it wasn't hard for me to gauge, even though there were people that were saying Chris Avalos was going to stop Carl Frampton, but again, using that Roger Mayweather model, who he beat, like, Carl Frampton is a lot more skilled than people give him credit for, and he's a lot more battle tested, anybody that goes in with a guy like Kiko Martinez twice, and does what he did, and beats him twice, um, you got to give him credit because Kiko Martinez is a guy you don't want to sleep on. He's um, destroyed people. He knocked out Jeffrey Matabula, who is damn near six foot at that division, and actually gave Nonito Donaire some trouble in terms of his height. And that was Nonito Donaire before he lost to Rigandau. And, I mean, he got his job broken by Donaire also, and he got knocked down. But it wasn't an easy fight. It wasn't a clear cut. Donaire didn't stop him or anything like that. And Kiko Martinez did. So Kiko Martinez is one of those Orlando Salido types where he has some losses, but you don't want to sleep on him either because he can come out with the victory as well. So again, I just felt Carl Frampton was more battle tested. He had proven more. He had shown me more skill set. And you guys can read some of the tweets I was saying even before the, the action and, and the stoppage and stuff. He was showing that separation. What I liked from Carl Frampton was his execution of the game plan. He didn't let all that sideline, uh, pre-build-up shit getting spit on and, and all that affect him. He stuck with the game plan. He showed and exercised patience, used a good jab, and he was just raining down with right hands from hell. And ultimately, it was too much. Chris Avalos, he didn't really respond like a fighter. I'm not trying to badmouth the dude, but he, he didn't. He You know what I mean? He was getting backed up and, and bombed on with rights. And it's like not having that experience, that championship level experience like other fighters have, like Frampton has and stuff. Um, he just seemed like a deer in headlight. He didn't know what to do. He didn't respond well to that onslaught. And I mean, pretty much he got destroyed. Now, looking forward, something that they talked about, they talked about making a fight with Quig. Now, I understand the business of boxing. That's a good big money fight for um, just the UK and, and stuff. Uh, Frampton has a good size fan base. He's Irish. They they get up for their fighters, most deaf. Um, Quig, also undefeated. He has a, a decent sized fan base, I would say. So I would say that's a good money fight. And Quig is a, is a respected guy too. But it's funny because in the post fight, they're saying, oh yeah, we intend to prove that that Carl Frampton is the best, but the whole post fight, they had Quig in the ring and, um, they're tr pretty much gearing to like, it sounds like they're gearing up to try to negotiate a fight with Quig. To me, all roads lead to Yermo Rigandau. I think he's the man to beat at super bantamweight. So to me, that proves more. Rigandau also undefeated. He has an illustrious background in the Olympics. He's a gold medalist, great amateur pedigree. Um, I would say Rigandau, the the his biggest wins in less fights are better. Like he, he has, I don't know if he has twelve fights, something like that. But anyway, Rigandau's wins over Donaire and Joseph Ibeko trump anybody on Chris Avalos, anybody on Scott Quigg's resume. There's nobody on either of those guys' resume, or even Carl Frampton. You know what I'm saying? There's no one on their resume that that trumps that. 
You know what I mean? Especially Quig and um, Avalos. Donaire was on people's top 10 pound for pound list. So to me, Reagan is the man to beat. If you want to be the super bantamweight champion and you say you're better than Santa Cruz, you're better than Rigo and, and stuff, I think Reagan is the man to beat. So that's the fight I want because both guys show skill. They both can execute a game plan. Uh, we've seen a little bit of vulnerability in Reagan last fight as he got dropped twice. And Frampton has some power. He has some pop. So it's a good fight. I think Reagan he's the ultimate thinker. He's very swift with finesse. It's Jackal versus Jackal. They're both nicknamed the Jackal. So I think that's the better fight. Now, the better business would be obviously Scott Quigg because it'll probably draw a bigger crowd, especially in the UK. But it, that's what I'm saying. Like People people say they want to prove they're the best, but they want to prove they're the best with the, with the right business sense or whatever. So to me, I think the more telling fight, I would rate Carl Frampton higher if he were to beat Rigondeaux than I would ever rate him if he were to beat Scott Quigg. That's my personal opinion. Now, again, I'm not shitting on Quigg. It's not a horrible fight. It's still a good fight, but a better fight and a more telling fight and a more uh, fight that's going to require a different level of skill set to me is a fight with Rigondeaux because he gives you so many different looks and different dynamics that is going to be a puzzle for you to figure out. So that's the fight I would rather see personally because I want to see if Carl Frampton can figure out that puzzle. I mean, it's going to take a guy with similar attributes, someone who has power, someone who also has skill and stuff like that and who's going to remain calm. But I have to see it to believe it. Right now, I would I would rock with uh, Rigonel. I like Carl Frampton and I've always told people about Carl Frampton, but Sean is proven and, and Rigonel has proved more to me. So I would rock with that. But it's not out of the question for Frampton to win. That's why I want to see it a lot more than uh, Scott Quigg. But hopefully we get those unification fights that we want. Quigg, again, is not a bad fight. Props to Carl Frampton. He really did his thing. And even after the fight, he said it was easy. And it really looked like easy work. It didn't look like he struggled or had to go to plan B. Plan A worked like a motherfucker. So let me know what you guys think. What do you want next for Carl Frampton? Do you want to see those unis, the unification fights? Do you want to see Carl Frampton versus Rigondeaux versus Leo Santa Cruz versus Scott Quigg? What do you guys want? Make sure you drop me a comment and let me know. I really think they should um, create like a tournament in that division. There, There's enough guys where it could get interesting. But drop me a comment. Let me know what you guys want. Make sure you like my video as always. Hey, comment and subscribe. Till next video is Ego. Signing off.